is that Sarah had indeed changed. In your opinion, why would your mother remain in hiding over several weeks? You must leave me alone now. I have agreed to everything, even to... But you do realize your mother will have to accept the consequences of her acts. I hope that your search will prove successful and bring Sarah back to us soon. I'll be leaving now because whatever it is you're up to, I do not want to know. Since then, we have become one and the same. We have officially erased the identity of my sister Emma. Emily Hillsborough. The woman with two faces. Everyone seems to be a little unnecessarily heated. Don't forget where you are, please. Don't move. Wait, I don't... So you've come at last. Easy. Let me turn around. Oh my god, Mother, what has happened to you? Who are you? What? But, Mother... Who are you? It's me, Louis, your son. No, you lie. You won't catch me out like that. Louis... Louis isn't here. He obeys his mother. He would never have come here. Mother, I don't know what you've been through, but lower your arm, please. You think I was born yesterday, do you? But it won't work. I'm begging you. One day you will fall. Mother! Why are you here? I'm here to help you. You have nothing to fear. If only it were so simple. You are evil incarnate. Every word that comes out of your mouth is sharper than a razor blade. I don't wish you any harm. Really, Mother, it's me, Louis. Don't speak to me about him. You will never get him. Mother, stop torturing yourself. It really is me, Louis. How can I convince you? If you really are who you say you are, what was the saying I taught you? You've been telling it to me since I was three years old, Mother. How could I ever forget it? Always keep your mind rational. And open. You knew it. You are smart. You're getting me muddled up. Tell me, rather. Whose place were we at when I told you I was coming here? Mother, I really am your son. You can't trick me. We were in Paris. We were investigating an art dealer. His name? I just told you, you can't trick me. His name was Von Borchert. My god, everything is lost then. I refuse to believe it's really you, Louis. Otherwise, all this would be for nothing. Mother, I, I don't know what happened to you, but don't worry. Everything is going to be fine. I'm here for you and... No, I ordered you not to come with me. I received a letter and... Lord Mortimer informed me of your disappearance, so I took the- No! 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 
It's not true. It's a nightmare. Don't tell me that. Have you spoken to him? Oh, shit. She's completely panicked because I spoke to Mortimer. It seems she's afraid of what he might have said to me about her. Did he speak to you? Don't believe it. I, I thought I'd meet him the moment I arrived, given the situation. But not at all. He didn't even bother to meet me in person. I imagine that Elizabeth was still here. Very well. Rational and open, Louis. Since you arrived on the island, has anything strange happened to you? Depends on what you mean by strange. Everything I found in Lord Mortimer's secret study. You managed to get past the nightmare? I'm proud of you, Louis. But that's not what I meant by strange. He's nevertheless extending his influence across the world, Mother. I know, but that's not what concerns me right now. I asked you if anything strange has happened to you personally. Like me having visions, for example? I knew it! It started! Oh, Hell, Louis, I panicking. just wish I could... Yes, it's happened to me. Like when I was a boy. I find myself in someone else's body for the space of a dream. Have you ever dreamed of a different place to the one where you were sleeping without being able to explain it? No. But mother, don't worry. I'm not losing my mind. Everything is fine. You used to give me a concoction to calm me down when I was little. So, just make some for me once we get back home. Migraines? Loss of consciousness? Loss of control? No, no, rest assured. All is well. I promise you. What else? Personally, I think that you being missing for three days, and then me finding you underground, minus a hand, well, that qualifies as strange, don't you think? No, my hand is not important for the moment. If that's the only thing you've found that shocks you, then all is well. Now shut up and listen to me. We might still have a chance. Something of utmost importance is going to play out right here. What are you talking about? A conference, Louis. I should think all Mortimer's guests have arrived by now, haven't they? Yes, they have. Since this morning. Perfect. The conference will be able to begin. You will attend this conference, and you must find out what Mortimer is up to. Don't trust him, Louis. Understood? Right. I'll do what you ask of me. But calm down, please, Mother. Louis, I made a mistake by coming here. We are in the lion's den. What do you mean? Mortimer, home, their guests. Watch what happens. Do you think it's normal that the representatives of the most powerful nations are here all on their own without anyone else? On an island in the middle of nowhere in total secrecy? No, not really, but- Louis! They shape the world. They manipulate us. Everything is decided here and now. They create and break states, provoke wars, destitute governments, or decide who will be their leaders. Open your eyes! Mother, calm yourself, please. Nothing is impossible for them. They are capable of reaching everyone, wherever they may be. Through high society banquets, they model the future of us all. And it isn't at all an issue for them. And? What do you propose? It's time to act, my son. You will go to this conference and, from the inside, you'll do everything you can to prevent Mortimer's plan from going ahead smoothly. We can talk later. I'll explain everything. But why? Do as I say, Louis. It's of the utmost importance. Beware of Mortimer. He won't let anything stand in his way. You promised me that after- Yes, after. Go now. 
Yes, Mother, I'm going, I'm going. One more thing, Mother. Emily Hillsborough, Emma's sister, came to this island looking for her sister. She probably won't hesitate to take revenge and... It's the signal that the conference is starting, Louis. Don't be concerned about the Duchess. She's the last of our worries. There's the alchemical symbol of the earth on the lid. Monsieur de Richet, you are expected at the conference. Please take the door to your left to join the guests. Ah, Louis, I've been expecting you. Uh, thank you for joining us. We are about to begin our conference. Let me explain what is at stake. Thank you kindly, but what do you expect of me exactly? My mother's the one who's supposed to attend, not me. That is indeed what was initially intended. Unfortunately, she still hasn't been found, and my guests can't stay here indefinitely. The conference must begin, and it would be truly beneficial to the Order to join in the project. Consequently, I would like you to replace her during her absence. 
What is at stake here is of the utmost importance. It's important that the French Order gets their say. And should you need any advice, don't worry. You are not alone, Louis. Very well. Can you give me a brief explanation of the aim of it all? Of course, Louis. I was coming to that. The aim of these meetings is to bring together the most influential people in order to think together about the future. But the future of who? Of the world, Louis. Our desire is to steer the destiny of our respective countries for the good of all, and to no longer suffer the random hazards of history. In concrete terms, how do you organize your discussions? A conference is always organized the same way. There are two masters of ceremony who determine an important subject. You and Sir Gregory, I presume? Exactly. We shall be the masters of ceremony. It was our obligation to each bring to the table several guests in order to debate a subject. Once the debate is closed, a decision will be made by a vote of all the participants. By a unanimous vote. If the project is not agreed on by all, then it will be rejected. And neither of the two masters of ceremony have the right to vote. It's up to the guests alone to decide, Louis. In other words, us. Gregory and myself are merely the go-betweens. Finally, if the project is validated, each guest goes home and starts working to make it happen. It can take years. How long have you been active? Oh, this tradition has more or less always existed, Louis. It has continued from generation to generation. Can you give me an example of an event that was decided here before being implemented in the outside world? Well, take the French Revolution. It was decided right here two years before its implementation in France. Concerning the case of the French Revolution, I wasn't invited. But as far as the American Revolution is concerned, Louis, I can testify that we planned it five years before implementing it, for example. Do you often hold this kind of society dinner? In general, once a year, but in actual fact it tends to be events that dictate our gatherings. Louis, let me keep you a moment. I would like to let you in on a secret before we begin, because I'm going to need your assistance. You see, the project I'm going to present concerns the territory of Louisiana, in North America. It's currently Spanish territory, and I'm going to make the proposition to the Assembly for it to become French. But how does that concern me? Well, you see, I prepared this project with your mother. We began thinking about a crazy idea. Unfortunately, Sarah went missing before getting the bigger picture. I don't intend to stop at Louisiana. My idea is to increase the territory of the United States. The first stone of this vast project consists of getting Spain to cede Louisiana to France. Once it becomes French, France will hand it over to the United States, which will then allow them to double the size of their territory. And that's where you come in. France and the United States, hand in hand, two democracies illuminating the world. Lord Mortimer, I'm sure you're aware that Louisiana is hardly prime quality land. I wouldn't be exaggerating to call it marshland. How is acquiring land they won't know what to do with going to strengthen the United States? Think further, Louis. The United States won't stop there. Once they've acquired Louisiana, nothing will stop them. All they would have to do then is keep pushing toward the West to take the whole North American continent. So you intend to get rid of the Spanish? They are purely transitory. This is the settlers' home. It is natural for them to want to develop their nation to become one of the greatest powers of this world. As for the Spanish, there are just a handful of them actually on site. And if need be, we'll see to it that they are sufficiently occupied in Europe so that their focus is not on the North American continent. 
Moreover, Spain really only cares about its colonies in South America. It's hardly my fault if they are not capable of seeing the potential in the North American territories. The concept of royalty is from bygone times. It is time to lead the way to democracy. Take a look at them. Apart from President Washington, they all belong to monarchies. Do you really think they won't resist? Of course they'll fight, fearful as they are of losing their precious privileges. But the world needs visionaries, like you, like your mother. It's a pity Sarah isn't here to see it. She only knew about a tiny part of the project. I hope I can count on you, Louis. It's time to start now. I must ask you to keep it to yourself for the time being. Take a seat, follow the discussions. We'll have an opportunity to catch up later, and you'll be able to let me know your thoughts. Blast it, Mother. You didn't know about everything. This project is commendable. Why tell me to beware? Could you have gotten it wrong? I can tell you that someone is an idiot. My friends, I propose we get started. First of all, I would like to thank you for taking the time to come. The honor is ours, my lord. As per our custom, here we are all together to discuss the face of tomorrow's world. Even though there may be certain tensions between our nations, I must ask you to keep an open mind. As Sarah de Richet is unable to be among us, please welcome Louis de Richet who will represent the Golden Order and will vote on its behalf when the time comes. Welcome among us, Louis. Welcome, Monsieur. I Richard. hope he'll be more effective than his mother regarding the protection of the King of France. The Order has proved particularly inefficient. Come, Manuel, you're not going to spoil our visit. The Order's mission was not to protect King Louis XVI, as far as I am aware. We are talking about the King of Divine Blood, for goodness sake. It seemed obvious to me he needed protecting. If the Golden Order wants to pride itself on being an influential organization, it should have kept him alive. Perhaps we may begin, Lord Mortimer. Certainly. I have a dream that our nations will continue to support each other, more now than ever before. A dream that, for the sake of common good, we will do what it takes to ensure stability in the modern world. I have a dream that we shall lead by example and ensure that the American territory may remain in peace. Thank you for the thought, Lord Mortimer, but I don't see where you're leading. I'm coming to it, Mr. President. I need not remind you that North America is currently divided between the United States on the East Coast and Spain, which occupies the remaining two-thirds of the continent. Well, I propose that Spain cede the center of the continent to France, namely all of Louisiana. Louisiana? But, well, it is not for sale. Lord Mortimer. I sincerely hope I have not come all this way just to hear you ramble on about what Spain should and should not do. When we went to all the trouble of gaining the territory a few years ago, it was not just to lose it today. Have I made myself clear? What did I tell you, William? You speak of union, and yet here you are about to tear us apart. Duke Manuel, I perfectly understand you. But rest assured, you will soon adore my proposition. You shall see. Well, since you give me the choice, my good fellow, allow me to doubt it. However, I am impatient to hear what Spain could possibly gain from the sale of Louisiana. I never spoke of a sale, my good fellow. What? I, I do not understand. There is one more territory left to conquer, if I'm not mistaken, in the Northwest. It is, of course, occupied by your notorious Indians, but... We shall soon be rid of the savages, so that is not the question. Duke, these savages, as you call them, were there before you. They are on their homeland. A 
As much as the black people of Africa, Monsieur de Richet. That does not stop your dear France from massacring them and sending them like cattle to Mr. Washington's cotton plantations to provide him with cheap labor. So you keep your morals to yourself, if you please. Senor, I would not like to be associated with that. The subject of black slaves in the United States of America is a complex subject, which we shall resolve at a future date. Senor Godoy, you must know that France will soon ban these barbaric practices. Oh, do not get on your high horse, Monsieur Frenchman. The only reason why France has ceased trading in slaves is because of the commercial blockade that Great Britain has imposed against you. The instant the shipping lanes have been restored, France will again treat these people like cattle. Come now, my friends. Let us not digress. Anyway, these primitive people have no souls, Louis. We bring the good word to them in order to save them. You'll see. Colonization brings with it many benefits, too. Uh, excuse me, if you don't mind, Your Eminence, uh, I shall continue. Duke Manuel, I believe that Spain should cede Louisiana to France free of charge. This is utterly grotesque, Lord Mortimer. What a strange example you set for your young protege. Isn't that so, Monsieur de Richet? Do you understand anything of this proposition? If I were you, Senor Godoy, I would think twice before stirring up a scandal. I beg your pardon? Given the size of your colonies, you won't be able to keep them for long. A number of countries are eyeing them as we speak. The United States would have no trouble taking them. For all intents and purposes, you have no army in place. By wanting to keep everything, you risk losing it all, especially your colonies in South America, which are far more valuable to you. That is indeed the danger, Duke Manuel. If it comes to war over Louisiana, you will lose. And probably a good deal more than you now imagine. Young man, you are indeed a dark horse, aren't you? I must say, William, I find your project mostly disfavors me. I thought you were my friend. And I am, Mr. President. That is why I'm doing everything in my power to calm your expansionist fervor. France, in Louisiana, should persuade you not to attempt anything to take the territory by force. Louisiana is a vast wetland where you would needlessly lose most of your troops. It would weaken you and offer certain nations the perfect opportunity to take back your famous United States. I am protecting you from yourself, George. Trust me. I understand. But with friends like you, sir, I certainly don't need any more enemies. I hope you know what you're doing. Not to put too fine a point on it, Lord Mortimer, uh, but I doubt the Holy See would be in favor of Catholic Louisiana being handed over to secular revolutionaries and king-killers. I should think Monsieur de Richet has an opinion on this subject, does he not? On the maps of Italy I saw in Mortimer's secret study, he had anticipated movements of troops across Italy. I wouldn't be surprised if he's planning an invasion of Italy by France, and if I push the notion a bit further, I can well imagine that Bonaparte's cannons, financed by the Order, will be used for that purpose. The noose is tightening around poor Piaggi's neck without him even realizing it. I don't know if I'm the best person to speak about that, Your Eminence. Well, 
I think that the French army will enter Italy, and that the Vatican will do whatever France demands of it, if the Vatican wants to retain its place. You are joking, I hope. Lord Mortimer, I did not come here to listen to such nonsense. What makes you think that, Monsieur de Richet? Well, Monsieur Bonaparte, here present, has ordered a large number of cannons, and I wouldn't be surprised if they were to be used to keep Italy under control. Come, sir. What a strange idea. I have enough on my plate with issues in Corsica. If you say so. You see, you're... But Corsica is not where the cannons are to be delivered, is it? Aye, but... Ah, Louis, you are quick-witted. I like you. You seem to be overlooking something, Messieurs les Français. I also have backers, who would be only too pleased to demonstrate the full extent of their fervor by defending the Vatican. Mi auguro che insegnerete l'educazione a questo giovanotto presuntuoso, Sir Gregory. I hope that you will teach this pretentious young man some manners, Sir Gregory. It looks like I won't be just making friends here. In any case, my lord, I doubt the English crown will agree. Ich will sicherer Ihnen, Emily. Nie Preußen wird diese Feinbarung akzeptieren. I assure you, Emily, the Prussian will never accept this agreement. Volner looks like he's set on ruining Mortimer's plan. Duchess, I am persuaded that we shall find a common ground. That's enough, William. These are great times. We don't care about the fate of Louisiana. That worthless expanse of putrid swamps interests no one but yourself. Speak for yourself, my friend. Hold on there, Mr. Royal Gigolo. Lower the volume and let Sir Gregory finish. Holm, Godoy, and now Volner? Mortimer's adversaries are ready to tear each other to pieces, and he takes a malicious pleasure in watching it happen. How dare Gentlemen, you! Gentlemen, let us try to remain calm. There you are, William. See where your projects have taken us, as per usual. Chaos! That's enough. I'm tired. We shall continue this discussion tomorrow, but please be aware that your project will never be ratified. Those who are opposed to this project, follow me. Are you coming with us, Monsieur de Richer? Come, Gregory. I think Louis would rather stay. Wouldn't you, Louis? As for me, I think I shall remain with Lord Mortimer, Sir Gregory. You are committing a grave error, Louis. Time will tell. My friends, I would like to thank you for staying. Good God, William. What is this I hear about you reinforcing military power in Louisiana? I have no interest in having France for a neighbor, and you know that very well. Calm down, George. Louis, explain our plan to Mr. Washington, please. You see, Mr. President, Lord Mortimer anticipates that once France obtains Louisiana, they will cede it to you. What do you mean? To us? The United States? You heard right. But I... President Washington, the United States will double in size. By what miracle have you... You need to expand, George. You and France are the two major democracies in the modern world. It is necessary that you both become superpowers. Are you really going to sponsor democracy throughout the world? Of course, Monsieur Peru. That's why I don't want Spain to get too attached to those weapons. 
Uh, please continue, Louis. Explain my vision to Mr. President. Mr. President, Lord Mortimer intends for you to conquer all the North American continent. He's relying on you to not stop at Louisiana, but to continue to push west. Indeed, it would be dishonest to pretend that this is not my final objective. But why didn't you tell me before? So, home doesn't see it coming. But by the time it dawns on Senor Godoy, It'll be too late, because he'll realize that he's just lost all the North American continent. We all know that you won't stop once the path is cleared before you. What do you mean? You see, Monsieur Peru, it's very likely that once Louisiana becomes American, President Washington will push out even more and take the West Coast. William, you haven't changed. Always one step ahead. One step ahead? You're joking. More like five. On that note, my friends, it's getting late. Mr. President, continue to take offense over my project when we resume the conference in the morning. You do it to a T. And if Sir Gregory has the audacity to send you an emissary to convince you to go against me, do me a favor. String him along if you can. The more they believe we are divided, the more we'll have our hands free. Only too happy to oblige. Now, let us get some rest. We've got a big day tomorrow. Good night, gentlemen. Good night. Louis, if you have a minute, I would like to ask a favor of you. I'm going to require your services. How can I be of help? Tell me all about it. Our adversaries are many, and the closing vote of the conference will soon be upon us. Time is of an essence, so I'll need you to assist me this evening. How can I help? I need you to go this very evening to persuade Senor Godoy to join us. He is the backbone of Gregory's resistance. Turn him round, and all the others will follow in such a stampede that Gregory will be able to do nothing but admit defeat. Lord Mortimer, with all due respect, don't you think I'm the last person Godoy wants to talk to? I'm sure you can do it. I believe in you. Lord Mortimer, you're not telling me everything. Let's say I wouldn't disapprove if the right honorable, though nonetheless choleric, Duke Manuel put you in his bad books. If it could motivate him to declare war on France, it would greatly serve our interests. War? What do you mean? I told you before the conference. The more we distract Spain from the Americas, the less it will have an eye on Louisiana. But all the same, we're talking about a war in Europe. Don't worry. That's why Mr. Bonaparte is with us. I am convinced we'll be perfectly capable of managing the conflict. And Signor Godoy is not a great soldier. He will not commit Spain to a long war that he won't be capable of managing. I'll go straight away. Thank you, my boy. And get some rest afterwards. Big day tomorrow. Monsieur Johann von Wulner. President George Washington.
Monseigneur, His Eminence Cardinal Piaggi. Huh, that's me. Ah, Monsieur de Richet. Uh, you wouldn't have seen Duke Manuel by any chance, would you? I was going to ask you the same question. I wanted to speak to him, but no one will open the door. I'm not sure he's in there. If I want to pass through, I'll have to get Volner out of the way. Perhaps he didn't hear you. Did you try entering? No, of course not. <laughs> it would not be proper, after all. Excuse me, but I must fetch a letter for the Duke. Very well, sir. You may pass. Mary Louise of Parma. <laughs> How ironic having a painting of the Queen of Spain in one's room, my Lord Duke. Hmm. It looks like someone's hidden something on the back of this painting. It's a letter. Of course, it's written in Spanish. And it reeks of lavender. Well, well, Monsieur Godoy. You seem very interested in hiding this letter. Another secret romance, I presume? Prometheus, punished for stealing fire from the gods and giving it to man. Don Quixote, talking without thinking is like shooting without taking aim. Hmm, I'm gonna have to think about that one. The Kiss of Judas, painted by Caravaggio. This is how Judas pointed out Christ to the Roman soldiers. Can you imagine a worse betrayal? Brutus and his companions taking an oath to kill Caesar. Charles IV of Spain. Now there's no chance of Godoy forgetting who he owes everything to. Golden elixir. Hmm. I'll keep it for later.
Mary Louise of Parma. <laughs> How ironic having a painting of the Queen of Spain in one's room, my Lord Duke. Hmm. It looks like someone's hidden something on the back of this painting. It's a letter. Of course, it's written in Spanish. And it reeks of lavender. Well, well, Mr. Godoy. You seem very interested in hiding this letter. Another secret romance, I presume? So, let's see what it says. It seems that the Queen isn't the only one enjoying the Lord Duke's favors. Hmm. If the Queen found out, it would cost him dearly. I'll keep it with me. You never know. Carmelite water will give me a little reprieve. Volner's probably still behind the door. I best go out through the balcony just in case. This is Thursday. Discourse on the Method by Descartes. This book changed the way I looked at the world. is surrounded by a triple circle. All right, I've retrieved everything. Duke Manuel? Well, well. Monsieur de Richet, I was not expecting you. 
I am not in the mood, sir. I warn you. What do you want from me, sir? You and I both serve our countries as best we can, Duke Manuel. We're our ambassadors. That doesn't mean we have to oppose each other. France and Spain have always been neighbors and friends. We share common issues and it's not in our interest to come into conflict, let alone on our own home soil. All right. You have my full attention, Monsieur de Richet. Make good use of it. Just tell me one thing, Monsieur. Why did you side with Mortimer? He is alone, isolated. The United States can do nothing to help you, and France is surrounded by over ten countries just waiting for the word to pounce. Really, I do not see why you choose Mortimer. But, monsieur, just think about it. It will enable the United States to become a giant democratic state. What a message for the rest of the world. We will shove your damn democracy down your throat, de Richet. I will raise the whole of Europe against you. Tell me, do you really believe Spain has any interest in ceding Louisiana to France? Duke Manuel, for Spain, I don't know. But for you, I'm convinced that Lord Mortimer will thank you generously. Ah, uh, you would not be trying to bribe me, would you? Nothing could be further from my mind. It would be an insult to believe that someone such as yourself might have a practical attitude towards its virtue. Even so, it is only natural that you be supported and encouraged if you were to follow Lord Mortimer, isn't it? Indeed, for services rendered, it would be natural for me to receive compensation for the time spent achieving such an undertaking, yes? Naturally. And, given your status, my Lord Duke, the compensation would have to be considerable. Naturally. Tell me one last thing. What would I gain from all this? If you continue with home, our two countries will become rival. It could turn into war. Who knows? It is likely, even. A war, Duke Manuel. On our own territories. Do you really see yourself committing the Kingdom of Spain to an armed conflict against France? Can you imagine the financial investment required, not to mention the loss of lives and dishonor at the slightest defeat? Do you see yourself being the man responsible for that? No. But you are the one who's pushing me into it, you damned Frenchman! I'm not pushing you into anything, Duke Manuel. If you are a man of the future and of progress, as I'm given to believe, you will know how much suffering a war would bring. Come on, you fool, give it up. You're trapped like a rat. Monsieur, I am astounded. I did not think you capable, but you have succeeded. I will be more wary of you the next time. Nonetheless, if you can guarantee Lord Mortimer's support, then yes, you can count on my vote when the time comes. However, I expect you to be discreet with regard to my former partners, without which our agreement would become null and void. Of course, my Lord Duke. You can count on me. Lord Mortimer will be delighted to hear the news. I hope you know what you are getting into, Louis. I bid you good luck. Good night, my Lord Duke. See you tomorrow. Well, that's one thing out of the way. Only thing left to do is wait for the conference to resume tomorrow morning.
Peru's name tag's fallen off, and his door's ajar. Dear Monsieur Peru, I'm writing to thank you for the funds you sent. These funds will be crucial for the renovation of the western wing of the orphanage. The children you sent are doing marvelously well, and little Pierre will soon be walking. Some of them still sometimes suffer nightmares about their parents on the scaffold, but I expect they will cease in due course. Should you decide to send us more, please note that another 20 beds will soon be ready. The children and myself will never thank you enough. Long live the Republic. Long live France. Sister Marie-Allen. All right. I've retrieved everything. Monsieur Napoleon Bonaparte. Ah, Monsieur de Richet. Uh, you wouldn't have seen Duke Manuel by any chance, would you? I just ran into him. He was heading for the dining room. Ah, thank you. Good evening, Monsieur le Francais. Duchess, you're here. What a charming surprise. I'm beginning to think you can't be without me. You have managed to penetrate my armor, sir. Am I disturbing you, perhaps? That's not what I said. Ah, by the way, you surprised me during the conference. Why is that? Well, you are going to lose. Why stay with Lord Mortimer? I believe he has every chance of winning. My, you are a rash one. However, if ever you want to change sides, please feel free to let me know. But tell me, you didn't come here to try and make me change my mind, did you? That's the last thing on my mind. Although you would have everything to gain by it. Do you perhaps know something that I don't? Come on, Emily. It's time you lay your cards on the table. If you know something I don't about Lord Mortimer, now's the time. I don't want to speak ill of him, but in certain circles, you can't exactly say he has a good reputation. Continue. Well, there have been instances where he has used people, then gotten rid of them once he no longer seemed to need them, Louis. He makes fine promises, makes you feel valuable, tests you. But beware. I'm worried that something might happen to you. Are you advising me to change sides as a precaution? 
I'd rather say as a safety measure. Louis, if you trust me, you ought to ask yourself why I have chosen home. You do trust me, don't you? Of course, Emily. You know you have my full trust. Louis, you're lying. That's not good. Any more of that and I might get upset. Admit, though, that it does make you think. There's still time, you know. Join us, before it's too late. Unfortunately, my word is my bond. I don't want to leave Lord Mortimer in the lurch. Very well, as you wish. It's up to you to decide. Tell me, are these visits to Mortimer's always so intense? Yes and no. My sister doesn't normally disappear like she has. Any news of your mother? Still nothing. And you? Any news of your sister? No, but knowing her, I'm persuaded she's on someone's trail. You'll see. She'll surprise us all. If only you knew, Emily. You're right. We must remain positive. I'm sure it won't be long before she turns up. My thoughts, too. She is <laughs> Duchess Hillsborough, after all. And as such, she is capable of anything. I am sure that you'll appreciate her. You'll see. No doubt about that. And it might turn out that you prefer her to me. Who knows? Indeed, who knows? You like to play with fire, Louis. Can we change subject, please? I didn't come here to go through all that again. Of course, it's late. You're right. My friends, do not worry. I assure you that Lord Mortimer's plan will never see the light of day. I shall deal with informing our allies, but for the time being, I need you to make a stand. What do you think about Monsieur de Richet? I don't know yet. I feel there's great potential in him. He looks like he can be trusted. And uh, Duchess Hillsborough. Oh, why isn't she here? She's busy. Don't worry about her. Oh, isn't it time to replace her? Not so fast, sir. She is an important figure. You ought to have a little more faith in her. What are we going to do about Washington? He will be a hard nut to crack. On our chessboard, he is Mortimer's king. Don't worry. Mr. President only wants one thing. To keep his dear America united. He won't jeopardize everything he has achieved on a whim. He has been serving Mortimer for quite some time. It won't be easy to uh, bring him around. Do you feel all right, Mr. Godoy? You haven't said a word. Please excuse me, gentlemen. I feel tired. Oh, I see. I think it is high time you left us then. Now! Emily? Emily? Are you there? Sir, the conference is about to begin. You are expected in the conference room. Tell them I'm coming. Thank you. Come on, Louis. The game is back on. My friends, the conference is about to begin. Please excuse me if I troubled you last night with my project. I understand that you might well have a few questions to ask. 
As you know, the final vote will be cast in a few days. This morning's aim is to answer your questions and check the temperature of your respective positions so that we may reach a greater understanding. As always, Lord Mortimer. Uh, we parted in perfect disagreement, my lord. Where would you like us to take it from? Come, sir. Please let William believe he still has a chance of winning us over. Otherwise, his imprecations will lack panache, and we shall be bored stiff. Oh, let me assure you, I am convinced that a good night's sleep has brought sound advice, and that this morning will be even more interesting. Therefore, I would like to go around the table in order to hear everyone's first impressions. Well, I am still firmly against it. Even though my choice won't count. Against. 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 And you, Luke Manuel? Well, you see, uh, it is more complicated than it... it uh... Good boy. Calm, Gregory. Don't try to impress my guests, please. They are not your guests. Gregory, anyone under my roof is, by definition, my guest. You included. I would be very grateful if you would let my guests speak. Duke Manuel, you were saying you still had some doubts? Well, you see, the situation has changed since last night. What's going on here, my Lord Duke? You see, I gave it some thought during the night. New arguments have come to light. What do you mean, Duke Manuel? Sir Gregory, I regret to inform you that Spain will not support you in this operation. I vote for. Moreover, in response to arguments brought to my attention, I declare war on France. What? What is he doing? If you think France is afraid of you, you are dreaming. Over ten nations rise against you, young man. And you behave like a yapping little dog? When the French armies are at your door, my Lord Duke, you will change your tune. Well, as for me, I am for Lord Mortimer's project. Despite Duchesse Hillsborough's overwhelmingly convincing nocturnal attentions. What? So Emily was playing at trying to win over guests last night? It was nothing more than a friendly little chat, of course. How could it be otherwise? And by the way, remember me to your husband when you see him. And you, President Washington, what is your position? Four, of course. Well, that leaves just yourself and Monsieur Peru, Louis. You're all making me sick. Look at yourselves. What? You are pathetic! Have you been drinking or what? There you are, quibbling away. My lord Duke this, and Madame Duchesse that. You know very well that we're nothing but puppets on a damn strap. Jacques, Camille, let's end the charade. It's over. Jacques. My lord, thank you for everything you've done for me over the years. But it didn't come for free. And now I see the price is too high to pay. I'll stop. Come, Jack, we'll talk it over. No, I'm finished. I want my freedom back, my lord. I shall no longer work for you. Wait. Derise, you just can't help it, can you? Stop trying to play the hero, man! Jack, you know you can count on me. Calm down, please. I'm going to help you. There's nothing you can do for me.
understand. I spoke to him only recently. Monsieur Perrault has lost his mind. It's obvious. Yet another way for the French to make a spectacle of themselves. Well, once again it has worked. My friends, let us settle down, please. We are all in shock, of course. Let us praise Louis' gesture, anyway. You did what you could. Yes, it was very noble of you, Louis. It wasn't your fault. There was nothing else you could have done. I think everyone needs a little rest. Can you stay a moment? Of course. Louis, I wanted to talk to you a moment about what has happened. All this is tragic, but I wanted to thank you for doing what you could. I wasn't able to save him. You couldn't, Louis. You mustn't blame yourself. It is not your fault. Of course, but I thought I could help him. I guess it was too late. Don't talk to yourself. Look what you've done. I admire what you did. Who else among all these great luminaries of the modern world even raised a finger? No one. You were the only one who tried to do anything. What a waste. What are your plans now? What do you mean? For the conference. After the disappearances of both Elizabeth Adams and my mother, and now the death of Mr. Perlou, I should imagine that your guests are all packing their bags. This might come as a bit of a shock to you. Perhaps because it was so difficult to bring all these figures together. But I am convinced that none of them is preparing to leave. Are you serious? They are all very experienced politicians. And though they are, of course, affected by the situation, they know full well that such an opportunity will not come again for a long, long time, if ever. They each represent their nation and know full well that what is at stake here is far greater than the death of poor Monsieur Peru. You'll see. I am confident that they will all be ready to resume the conference. If you say so, allow me to take my leave, please. Of course. You ought to get some rest. Oh, Louis, uh, one more thing, please. I wanted to thank you for your support during the conference. You've made the right choice, and it gives me tremendous satisfaction to have you with me on this project. What is at stake is worth it, my lord. Now, I won't hide from you the fact that I have no idea by what miracle we could ever get a unanimous vote. Trust me, Louis. We still have a few more cards to play. You'll see. Anything can happen in politics. I'll see you later, my lord. Remember to close my window once you've done my room. This isn't Corsica, you know. I'm freezing. Of course, sir. I'll see to it straight away. Good. Proceed. Yes, sir. Monsieur Bonaparte. Don't feel guilty over Monsieur Peru. You did your best. We just lost the vote for the next conference, and we already had fewer votes than Holm. I must absolutely find a solution. Mm. 
Excuse me, sir, but given recent events, I find it somewhat cavalier to return to your political preoccupation so quickly. Yes, yes, I know. You must find me inhumane. But what can I do? We are here to decide upon the fate of our nations, Louis. It is time you realize what is at stake here. I hold nothing against Monsieur Peru personally. But what concerns me most right now is to not lose sight of the objectives of this meeting. In short, we haven't a minute to lose. I'll leave you now. Just a minute. What did Duchess Hillsborough propose last night? Oh, nothing worth worrying about. The pretty little pudding eater found no better tactic than to threaten me. She would have been better off sliding into my bed. At least we wouldn't have wasted part of the night talking for nothing. Threatened you, you say? That's what I said. I think I'm going to have to be careful of English troops crisscrossing the Mediterranean for a while. The witch would let loose the wrath of the English crown on my august person. But if she thinks that would scare a Bonaparte, she is mistaken. Now, Louis, time is running short, and as I said, I'm in a hurry. I have to go now. I will see you later. I am sorry, sir. But you are unable to access Monsieur Peru's room while we gather his personal effects. Duchess Emily Hillsborough. No answer. Nothing. Emily! Yes. Louis, is that you? Yes, let me in. I... I'm sorry, Louis. I don't feel very well. I'll see you later. Are you sure everything's all right? Are you still there? Next time, I'll listen to my mother. Not a day has gone by without something happening to me. What now? Louis, open up, please. Coming, Mr. President, I'm coming. Louis, oh, there you are at last. Yes, I... I just saw your mother. She was accompanied by Emily, and they both went into the Duchess's room. I tried to join them, but I was refused entry. Louis, this does not bode well. Oh, shit. Emily might want to avenge your sister. I must act quickly. You're right, Mr. President. Thank you.
President George Washington. I do believe that's Emily's voice. I can't understand what she's saying. can't open it. It must be blocked on the other side. I'll have to find another way in. Quick. I have to get inside Emily's room through the... Shit! Locked. It's as if there are several people inside. Once again, you're the one who's the victim in all this. What are you on about now? I should never have told you what happened A letter from William Pitt, the younger, addressed to Emily. I'm not that naive. I know you inside out. Stop. We'll end up losing everything if you keep A letter from William Pitt, the elder, addressed to Emily. He was the English Prime Minister. This letter dates from 15 years ago now. Madam. I shall never thank you enough for all your care and attention. I shall be indebted to you until my last breath. If you have any request of me, you only need ask. With regards to my son William, I shall never thank you enough for looking after him. You know the latter's preferences, and you will understand he needs you desperately. For that, and as agreed with Queen Charlotte, our friend Duke Hillsborough will carry out his task and meet with you within six months. From then on, You'll be free from want. Yours sincerely, William Pitt, Count of Chatham. What on earth is... You... Mother? How dare you do this to me? You can talk after everything I've done for you. You are joking, I hope. R Stop taking it out on Sarah. I... You pretty little bitch! How dare you! Now that I've told you everything, you want to take my place, do you? You are joking, I hope. I'm the one who told you everything that's been going on while you were away. Go on, then. That's what you want, isn't it? You want to kill me? Go on, then! Shoot! After all the trouble I've gone through to find you. Go on. What are you waiting for? Here. Louis. Take this. Wait! What's going- An entire life for this. Go on, shoot. Sorry, Louis, I, I can't shoot her. She's my sister. I... That's enough, Emma. Louis, out of the way. She's dangerous. Don't trust her. What are you trying to do? Louis, out of the way. I am not Emma. 
Come on, Louis, tell her who the real Emily is. Wait, I... That's right, Louis. I'm fed up with this little game. Tell him who the real Emily is. Why do these things always happen to me? Well, Louis, come on, you know how to tell us apart, right? Yes, yes, but I'd like to ask you a few questions to make sure there's no doubt. Rational and open, Louis. Let's see. How can I tell them apart? Wait, I've got an idea. On the night of our arrival... You handed me something. I wasn't feeling very well. And you handed me something. What was it? My handkerchief. And you stained it with your blood. You still have it, as a matter of fact. But she already knows all this, Louis. It's a waste of time. Right. Let's find something else. Ah, yes. Let's speak about my arrival at the manor. When we arrived at the manor, someone was already present in the Great Hall. Who was it? President Washington. She knows about this part as well. I'm warning you. Do you remember if we saw each other that night or not? Of course, Louis. You broke into my room. That doesn't prove a thing. I was the one who told you that. Don't think you're going to get away with this deception so easily. I can assure you, you're going to regret pretending to be me once Louis has exposed you. Right. I don't think I'll get very far like this. I'll have to find something better. Oh, I don't think I'll even wait until he's finished. Take it easy now. Are you mad, Louis? Lower your arm. <sighs> I better act quickly if I don't want things to get out of hand. Come on, she's putting one over on you. Look at yourself for crying out loud. You were prepared to shoot me down. in the secret room behind the study. Talk to them about what you've been doing. Maybe they haven't spoken about it between each other yet. On the night of the disappearance of Elizabeth Adams. What about it? What do you want to know about that night? We found ourselves in Mortimer's secret gallery. What relics did we find? Property deeds in Mortimer's name dating from very long ago. Is that all? You mean all those mythological charms? So, there was the so-called Pandora's box that wasn't a box, actually. The famous golden fleece that reeked of dead goat. A broken sword that could have belonged to anyone. Is that enough? Yes, that's enough. You look captivated. Of course, he bought it. That's enough! I've had enough of this charade. Louis... There's only one way to tell us apart. There's just one thing I didn't tell her about in detail. Too bad for you, Emma. I didn't want it to come to this, but you leave me no choice. Ask her about you and I. You just lost, Emma. I indeed didn't tell you everything about it. Come, Louis. Speak about our intimacy. Very well. Let's talk about us. Last night, you came to visit me, and I can't help wondering why. Why did you come to my room? Louis, you must be mistaken. I did not go to your room last night. And that's where your little game ends, Emma. Because I never told you about it. So, there you can't answer. What? No! You didn't do that. I didn't want you to be jealous of Louis. Remember how you always used to react whenever you felt you were competing against a man? You dirty... That's enough. I've had enough of this charade. That's enough, both of you. Now I know who the real Emily is.
It's you, Emily. No, Louis. She is manipulating you. No, Emma. It's her. I know it. Despite all the trouble you've gone to to put one over on me, I know it is her. That's enough now, Emma. You little slut. Don't think you are going to get away with this so easily. You are going to stop your little game right now. Never. I am Duchess Hill. No. Emily? I am the Duchess. But... You don't. I... Dear God, what have I done? See what you've done. See? Louis? Mother! What on earth is... Go away! You must go. Everyone is going to arrive. Louis, what's going on? Duchess, is everything all right? Come on, Louis! There's nothing more you can do! But I... Leave us. Emily, what's going on? Mother, go to the crypt. I'll meet you there. I'll be waiting for you. Emily. Madam, I am coming in. It was bound to end like this, Louis. Let me stay with her. Please, go. I'll cover you. Good God! They're all here. They must have heard the gunshot. Where is Lord Mortimer? Can anyone hear anything through the door? Louis! At last, there you are. Mother, wait, I... Come, we have to be quick. No, wait, Mother, I... Time is running out, Louis. First, we must... No! That's enough. I won't go a step further unless you explain to me what is going on here. I'm begging you. Talk to me. You must trust me, my son. You are not ready yet. You are the one who should trust me. Tell me what's happening. You would never believe me. I came all the way here for you. Now I've found you. I'm ready, Mother. If only... Louis, I have always taught you to keep your mind open and rational. 
I know you are going to find this hard to believe, but what I am going to reveal to you is entirely true. Many years ago, I found out that demons really do live among us. I beg your pardon? And that they can influence our thoughts. Mother, listen to yourself. I know you're exhausted, but for crying out loud, listen to what you're saying. Demons? <laughs> what next? An ancient monster with a head like an octopus? What do your demons look like? Have they got horns and a pointed tail? No, these are not creatures with billy goat's legs. Forget your Christian folklore. Imagine them more as parasitic spirits. They possess their hosts and direct them from inside. Parasitic spirits? Yes, they are capable of going from one body to another as they see fit. And two of them are present on this island. Right, so let me guess. Lord Mortimer and Sir Gregory, right? You felt it too? No, even if home does look the part. But I don't know who else could do it, given that we're on their territory. Many years ago, well before you were born, I crossed paths with one of them. Since then, I've spent my life trying to find it again. When we recovered the Alizif, I was persuaded that Von Burchard was working for this demon in one way or another. But I thought he would hand the book to a middleman during this conference. That's where I made an error, an error that could well turn out to be fatal. The one who Burchard was meant to give the book to was none other than the demon in person, Mortimer. Not to mention that Holm had sent Volner to get it for him. Holm and Mortimer are demons? They both seem to disagree about many things, but I'll admit I never knew exactly why. There are many of them, Louis, not just those two. Mother, have you any proof to support any of this? Of course, but you do too. You had everything laid out in front of you. Didn't you notice anything? Well, those property deeds across the world, all signed by the same hand, and over several centuries. I am proud of you, Louis. I found your notes, written in lemon juice. Where all eyes size you up. At one stage, I was so afraid of losing my mind that I noted everything down. Congratulations, Louis. Wait, please tell me you didn't open Pandora's box. The urn? No, I didn't. Why? Good. We'll deal with it later. I went beyond the Nightmare Mother. You understood the Masonic date. 1191. Of course! It was during that siege that the demon took possession of Sir Mortimer. They spent a whole night in conversation until the early hours of the morning. Mortimer had passed the test. He had charmed the demon, and so it chose him to be its host for centuries to come. But tell me, did you find his secret study? I did indeed. Did you see his maps of the world? He has contacts the world over. Yes, I've been developing the Golden Order across the world for many years, and I've never seen anyone with such influence. It's simply inhuman. I must admit, I found it difficult to understand how and why Mortimer didn't have a place in history. On the continent, Mortimer and Holm are mere dandies who organize society balls. History forgets them with a disconcerting facility. No one speaks about them, and yet they whisper in the ears of kings and presidents. You mean the conference? How can you explain that someone manages to bring together so many important figures without anyone knowing? And without any security or personnel. Louis, I am proud of you. You came all this way. You found me. You have surpassed me. You taught me everything I know. Right. 
How did it all begin? I saw him! What, what do you mean, you saw him? I was 20 years old. I was young and carefree. I traveled the world in search of adventure. In the Persian Gulf, we came across an ancient grimoire that became unlocked. Composed of seven parts, each one was a book in itself, set in a sort of metal armor that structured the whole thing. When all the volumes were brought together, they formed a single book. On my return to Paris, I set to studying these pages. I spent all my days and nights studying them. Oh, I can imagine you doing that. But the writing was in a language I had never seen before. Developed well before Sumerian, in my opinion. So I got the idea to form a small occult circle composed of all the major names in the occult world to see if anyone else could crack it. And you found no one. And I found someone, Louis. I found him. Or rather, he found me. He was young, charismatic, he was flamboyant. You mean Mortimer? He was a veritable mine of knowledge. I showed him the book, and he was able to decipher a few passages. We spent several months together studying the pages. He was already old in those days, wasn't he? So you recognized him when you arrived on the island, right? No, he wasn't in that body. But I know it was him. I swear it was him. The way he spoke, his posture, a few of his intonations, his mannerisms. Wait a minute. You were talking about 60 years ago. I I've lost the thread. Yes, sorry. He helped me understand certain passages until I realized that he only translated a few parts for me. But I had aroused his interest. It was too late. How so? I mean to say he manipulated me. He used me, and in the end, he stole the book with all its secrets. Did he ever go to your place? Not once. At least I don't think so. But before disappearing, he proposed a pact between us. He proposed that I follow him and let him teach me, allow him to bring me up. And you refused, of course. Why naturally, Louis. You don't make deals with the devil. After that, I spent my whole life looking for him. Three years later, in Berlin, I just missed him. In London, I lost six members of the Order in a chase. In 1741, in Tunisia, I found a sect of fanatics who had crossed paths with him once. 1741, in Poland. 1749, in India. Eight years ago, in Venice. We agreed never to speak about what happened in Venice, Louis. For the moment, that is not the key issue here. Once we found the Alizif in Paris, I followed Von Borchert's trail here. I didn't think it would lead me straight to the demon. It was careless of me. He toyed with me for a few days, until I caught on, until I saw him as he was. But he had no intention of letting me leave. We are all his pawns, Louis, and if we don't want to spend the rest of our lives turning round in circles here, we must absolutely get off this island. All right, can we move on? Wait a minute, one last thing. I want to know what happened with Elizabeth Adams. Louis, we haven't time for those details. You're probably right. What was going on with the cannons in Tuscany? It was nothing. Since when does the Order finance wars? The cannons for that Bonaparte fellow? Listen, once in the lion's den, I did whatever I could to appear legitimate. So yes, I pretended to be interested in Mortimer's project about a young military man who was seeking funding for a foundry in Tuscany. 
Between you and me, if buying China would have enabled me to escape, I would have signed without hesitation. I want to know what happened between you and Emily's sister. Great responsibility often brings difficult choices, Louis. That's all you need to know. Mother, I won't take a step further if you don't answer me. You dare blackmail me? I'm listening. All right, I used her. So there you are. Happy now? We had the Al-Azif, and I didn't think we would be able to escape with it. In order to ensure that the book did not fall into their hands, or that one of them couldn't read in us where we had hidden it, I asked Emily it's to... Emma. Yes, or rather for me, it was Emily. So I asked Emma to hide it without anyone seeing, and then I disposed of her. I am sorry for her, but she was part of the Golden Order, Louis. She knew the rules when she joined. What did you negotiate about the Alazif with Volner? Absolutely nothing. I managed to pull the wool over his eyes until I found a way to flee. I want to know what happened with Elizabeth Adams. Louis, we haven't time for those details. You're probably right. Samuel Ritter du Chois, you wanted to send me a letter about Godoy. I wanted you to run a check on Duke Manuel. But frankly, it doesn't really matter anymore now. Godoy is just a pawn like the others. He is not the one I was looking for. On the evening of my arrival, Cardinal Piaggi came looking for you. He was determined to give you a letter. More of his lists. Louis, I think I know what's in that letter, and I beseech you to believe that it is the least of our worries. We can sort that out later. Are you going to tell me what happened to your hand? Better than that, I shall show you. Good. I think that's about right. We shall speak about it once we get back to France. Great actions for humanity have been decided by demons for centuries, Louis. They are playing with our destiny. We are their slaves. And it's time for it to stop. By the way, what was Mortimer's project at this conference? He wants the United States to occupy all the North American territory. France should recover Louisiana and give it to the United States. In that case, the Americans would just have to push west to chase the Spanish from the continent once and for all. And as Mortimer controls Washington, you may just as well say that it will put him at the head of a world superpower. We should do our utmost to put a stop to Mortimer's plans. But for the time being, there are more pressing matters. Are you going to tell me why we're here? There. That's why we are here. Reassure me, we aren't going to have to force that one, are we? I don't think we're even capable of doing it. You're going to have to find a way to open it. Why, of course. And what's inside? Something to vanquish them with? Perfect. So, how does it open? We'll need several keys. I found a note from the architect who conceived the mechanism in Mortimer's secret study. We have to first gather five objects before we try anything. Are the five objects the keys? Exactly. We have the Clement III cross, the nails, the Gutenberg Bible, the exegesis of Judas, an armillary sphere, and all we need to match up the dates between the different calendars. Some nails? Don't ask me. I'm not the one who made the mechanism, you know. When I arrived, there were already a few of them inserted, so I didn't have to worry about those. On the other hand, I remember seeing some in Mortimer's secret study, behind his nightmare. 
In a golden cup? Yes. Yes, I saw them too. Perfect. It will be easy for you to find them then. You need three of them. Very well. You remember what to do about the rollers. 1191 to enter. And 6466 to exit. Of course. Why a cross? Well, I haven't the foggiest idea, but it just so happens that's what you are going to use to activate the mechanism. I found the one Mortimer kept. It belonged to Cardinal Guibert, better known by the name of Pope Clement III. Perfect. Where is it? Unfortunately, I've lost it. When I lost my hand, I went dashing out, and it must have fallen from my pocket. Well, otherwise I can... I can always go and see Piaggi. He's... he's a cardinal, after all. An exegesis. Anything else? Hmm... You... Did you manage to vanquish the Medusa? To open the chimney? Yes, absolutely. So you've already come across it. It's the Bible of Judas that is exposed in the secret room, behind the chimney. Why do they call it an exegesis? Because that's what it is, and not an apocryphal Bible, strictly speaking. It's the study of a text, with a summary, not an actual Bible. Anyway, well done for the Gorgon. You did well. You didn't get tricked by the light bouncing back. Thanks. Do you think I can take it safely? We haven't got a choice, Louis. Without it, we won't be able to work out this cursed mechanism. This is the book in which you left your correspondence with Duchess Hillsborough, isn't it? That's right. You still believe it's in the tower room, don't you? I don't know. There is only one way to find out, though. Right. I shall go and... There's one in the portrait gallery. Yes, but it's enormous. If you don't want to have to go back and forth several times, then I suggest you get a smaller one. What did you do, then? I didn't think I'd... What do you mean by the concordance of dates, exactly? Don't worry about that. We already have them. They are written on the back of the message I just gave you. One last thing before you go. Be very careful. If you come across anyone, they can all potentially be spies of Mortimer or Holm. Don't ever confide in anyone because a demon can slip inside them at any moment. Wait, not all of them though. Take Washington. Especially Washington. He's been conditioned by Mortimer for years. Look at them for crying out loud. How do you explain their behavior otherwise? The most influential politicians in the Western world gather together without the least protection, without a single aid to assist them, to participate in a conference during which the guests start dropping like flies. Me, Adams, Peru, Hillsborough. Look at the number of calamities that have happened over the past few days. And not one of them has asked to leave the island? Do you find that normal? You'll see. Go up to the manor to look for the keys, and I wager not one of them will speak to you about my being in Emily's room. Do you think so? Go on, you'll see. And come back with all the objects in one go. Time is against us. And remember, the code to get out of the secret office is 6466. Tell me, Mother, you wouldn't know anything that might save me some time, would you? That's where you'll have to put the Clement III cross. You insert the cross into the slot, and it will open the iris. Let's see if I can work it out myself. It looks like a kind of control panel. You ought to go, Louis. If someone finds us here, the situation might well become seriously complicated. Honey, the remedy of the gods. A 
cash. What is that? A disc with information engraved in the metal? An iris that should open, I imagine, in blood. Mother? The dried blood. There. Yes, yes, it's mine. Sorry if I stained everything, but I must admit that, at the time, my thoughts were more on the pain than cleaning up after myself. There are Roman numerals, Arab numbers, and town names. Go on. I'm listening. What do you think? Did you succeed in opening this, Iris? Yes, by putting the cross on the console and the three nails on the disc, the Iris opens. It gives access to a hole where I put my hand thinking I could fully open the iris. There's a handle at the bottom, and as you can see, it didn't turn out very well for me. Mother? The dried blood, there. Yes, yes, it's mine. Sorry if I stained everything, but I must admit that, at the time, my thoughts were more on the pain than cleaning up after myself. Let's see if the statues are in place yet. That statue is not positioned correctly. Open sesame! That's the exegesis of Judas. I hope Mortimer doesn't read it very often, otherwise he's going to notice that someone's stolen it. But that's just too bad. I need it. Right. I've got what I need. Now let's not waste any more time.
song of Roland. Roland feeleth amber crystals. painting. It looks unfinished. A piece by Lord Mortimer, I presume. Hmm. A rather avant-garde technique. The titan against men. <laughs> How ironic. This time, it'll be a lot quicker. If I remember rightly, the code was 1191. Weaknesses of the Human Psyche by Gilhelm Trimor. Gilhelm Trimor. Trimor. An anagram of Mortimer. Wow. Arrogant enough to publish writings on mental control. In full view of everyone. I wonder who he's writing for. There. Those are the nails I was looking for. A hand of tarot cards. I should have learned my lessons in card reading a little better. Mortimer's interested in black magic. Mortimer really is a demon. I wonder what he could be doing with all of this. A 
Van Leeuwenhoek microscope? The most sophisticated microscope there is. When I think of the difficulty the order had in getting hold of a chest with a motif representing the alchemical symbol of fire. Feathers, pigeons probably. Huh. Looks like obsidian or, or onyx. It must weigh a ton. What on earth could that be? All right, come on, let's get out of here. 6466, six, six, if I remember correctly. Ah, Louis. Glad you're here. Blasted. He's gonna talk about my mother. Come and see what I've found. There are pieces of paper in the ashes of the chimney. Someone's been burning something here. Incredible. He doesn't seem to want to speak to me about what happened between my mother and the Hillsborough sisters. Show me a little. Look, it's possible to distinguish two different writing styles. Hmm. The rest of the correspondence between my mother and Emma. Someone tried to burn an exchange of messages. I'm certain. There must be more. Shit. What on earth is he doing? If you want my opinion, a, a servant must have burnt some old papers. That's all. Why, of course. You very nearly made me think that you were trying to hide something, Louis. No, I'm sure there must be other hidden messages. He won't let go. He's going to work his way back to the Bible if he continues. Dante's Paradise. Raise your head and be reassured. For what comes up here from the mortal world must ripen in our rays. Bible's still there. A chest with the occult symbol representing air.
dear friend. Dear, all right. I've retrieved everything. Honey, I couldn't have hoped for better. It's a beautiful weapon, a Levy Damask Blade. It's marked with the initials of the manufacturer in Versailles. Dear son. A letter from William Pitt the Younger addressed to Emily. He's the present Prime Minister of the United States. Letter from William Pitt the Elder addressed to two coils circle the lock. Dear Gregory, thank you for the information. I've managed to find out about the names you gave me. George Washington is a man you can trust. In spite of his obvious talent for politics, he has remained upright and honest. On the other hand, as you may well know, he is already doing business with Lord Mortimer. It will be more difficult to approach him. Napoleon Bonaparte was unknown to me until today. He's a passionate young French soldier for whom Mortimer predicts a promising future. Take heed, he is a man of conviction, which to my mind makes him potentially dangerous. As for Sarah de Richet, what more is there to say? You already know each other. She was apparently invited by Lord Mortimer about an ongoing matter in Paris that concerns a receiver in stolen art. See you soon. Duchess Emily Hillsborough. I have no space left. I'll retrieve it later. Fragment of amber. Don Quixote. Talking without thinking is like shooting without taking aim. Hmm. You have to think about that one.
Ah, Louis, come in. Your timing is impeccable. I wanted to have a word with you. Oh, here we go. I was wondering how you are getting on in your search for our poor Sarah. You must have made some progress, I should think. I am terribly worried about her, you know. Come on, get out of here, Louis. You're in a hurry. Any news of her? Unfortunately not, no. Are you sure? You know, Louis, I don't want to put you on the spot. But I sense you are worried and that you are not telling me everything. What exactly did you come looking for in my room? What do you mean? Louis, I was not born yesterday. When you came in, I saw in your face a hint of disappointment at finding me here. I concluded that you were hoping you wouldn't run into me. You came here for something else. No, no. You're mistaken. I was just passing by. I shall leave you, Your Eminence. I wouldn't want to take up your time. As you wish, Louis. See you later. I have no time to lose, so I might as well not bother him. My dear Giuseppe, poor health forbids me from joining you. Please thank Sir Gregory for his invitation to Lord Mortimer's. I'm convinced you'll be able to strengthen our agreements. Please tell Sir Gregory that his enterprise concerning our friend Cardinal Bishop Chiaramonti is following its course. I place my trust in you. May God bless you and give you protection. SS Giovanni Angelico Brasco. President George Washington. August 24th, 1792. Elizabeth, I am driven to despair. August 24th. 30 November. August 24th. November. My dear Elizabeth. President George Washington. Ah! 
My dear George, I'd like to invite you to join. Carmelite water. They say that if you drink this, it gives you a real boost. Not too shocked. I beg your pardon? About Peru this morning. I asked you if you weren't too shocked by it all. And yourself? Not too shook up? The only thing that matters to me about that stupid man Peru is the disastrous situation in which it puts us for the conference vote. I wonder why Mortimer even allowed him to roam around the manor armed. He was a veritable public danger. Indeed. You don't seem to be too affected. Tell me. I was wondering. You wouldn't know where to find an armillary sphere, would you? Do you really think this is the right time? Oh, ask Volner. I am sure he will know. What with him being passionate about astronomy, you ought to get on fine together. Leave me now. I need to think of a solution. I won't keep you any longer. See you later, monsieur. Hmm.
chest with a motif representing the alchemical symbol of water. Couldn't have hoped for better. Bazant. Atrus, the Miller brothers. Mother expressly forbade me from reading it. Crystals. Dorishe, are you joking or what? You sell me pipe dreams about Mortimer's project, and a few hours later, one of your allies completely breaks down. Is this what Mortimer's side is all about? What am I going to do now? Come now, my lord duke. You know very well that at this level, things can get pretty rough. You ought to be used to it. Rest assured, Lord Mortimer has bounced back before. It's not an issue. What can I do for you? I'm dreaming. My mother was right. He's not going to tell me one word about what happened to Emily. To tell you the truth, I'm in search of an armillary sphere. You wouldn't know where I can find it, would you? Well, well. So you do have a passion for astronomy. Von Volner has already bored me quite enough with all of his endless stories. You ought to concentrate, Louis. Politics is an art that requires all one's attention. Refrain from spreading yourself too thin and leave stargazing to the poets. <laughs> what can I say? I am only... Ask Volner. I am sure he must have it among his effects. Perfect. Thank you, my Lord Duke. Leave me now. See you later.
Chronicles of the Amber Princes. As I recall, I have no space left. I'll retrieve it later. Johann von Wulner. An armillary sphere. Perfect. That will save me some time. I only hope that he isn't going to realize it right away. So, good. You've managed to gather all the keys. Yes, that's right. I have everything. What should I start with? Place the Clement III cross on the console. Then you have to put the nails on the disc of the door. What theme did you start with? As the fresco shows the birth of Christ, I placed one nail in Bethlehem, one in Chapter 2, and one in in verse 6. The iris opened a little. I thought it was normal. Behind the aperture of the iris, there is a duct in which I put my hand. I felt something like a valve at the bottom. 
I thought by turning it the door would open, or the iris would open completely, or something else would happen. Instead, I felt something like an axe cut off my hand. I really thought it was the end of me. What did you do then? Well, although I had made some unfortunate choices, I was lucky in that Mortimer was well stocked with drugs. I raided his supplies of medicine. What hole should I put the nails in? Well, I can't really advise you there, because I haven't exactly made the best choices myself. All I can say is that you have to insert one to choose a town, one to choose a chapter, and one to choose a verse. All right, my turn now. Go ahead, impress me. I'll shut up and let you concentrate. This exegesis contains comments from Judas on the different Gospels. It only contains certain chapters and verses, and the chapters are indicated by Roman numerals. The lexicon refers to different chapters and verses from the exegesis of Judas. Chapter 19, verse 17. Jesus was crucified on the 8th of Nisan, 3793, in a place near Jerusalem. The Romans put a crown of thorns on his head. Chapter 19, verse 17. And he, bearing his cross, went forth into a place called the place of a skull, which is called in the Hebrew, Golgotha, where they crucified him and two others with him on either side, and Jesus in the midst. The fresco clearly shows the birth of Christ. Louis, I can assure you that that is not the solution to this enigma. This fresco's only purpose is to mislead. I know that now. Please, focus on another theme about Christ. We'll have to trust her. Yes, it's definitely a representation of the birth of Christ, but some of the details have flaked away. I can't see any other clues. One thing is for sure, this enigma deals with the life of Jesus, like my mother said. works. Well done, Louis. I hadn't seen those other wheels. Try connecting the theme to see if it goes all the way. 
Hmm, it looks like there are three types of inscriptions. Clearly, we have names of towns, Arabian numerals, and Roman numerals. There must surely be a connection between the wheels. This wheel represents the different moons. In the occult sciences, we represent the full moon by an X. As for the dark moon, called the new moon, in cults, it's, well, it's often associated with something harmful. There are different icons on this wheel, but you now, given the difference between the number of icons and the number of towns, I think that only one path connects all the wheels with one another. Let's try to connect the theme I've chosen with the rest. Now, given the difference between the number of icons and the number of towns, I think that only one path connects all the wheels with one another. Let's try to connect the theme I've chosen with the rest. During new moon, the moon is entirely in the shadow. Then, the shadow moves from west to east, meaning left to right, and goes through the following states. Waxing crescents, first quarter, waxing gibbous, full moon, waning gibbous, last quarter, waning crescent, and the cycle starts over with the full shadowed new moon. The moon shadow moves from west to east. Seventh of Shaban, 607, first quarter. Nineteenth of Jamada Alawal, 639, waning gibbous. I can feel the lever at the bottom. Good luck. I never doubted you, my son. 